everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. So this is my kitchen renovation video that before we get into the full renovation and you see kind of the before and after, I thought I would just talk you through the plans briefly. So we moved into our house in September 2019 and we've been working our way through the house, transforming each room. And we're just umming and ahhing for so long about doing the kitchen because there was nothing wrong at all with our kitchen before. It was completely usable. It wasn't awful at all. And I think that's what really held us back um, from doing it was that the kitchen was actually perfectly fine, but it just wasn't to our taste and we're going to be here for a while. So actually we thought actually the sooner that we do it, the sooner we can like fully enjoy the new kitchen. The kitchen is actually an extension along the back of the house and um, that was done in 2014 and that is when that kitchen was fitted. And then we actually decided to have a 30th birthday party for me uh, at the beginning of July. So we do like a challenge, so we set ourselves a little task to get the kitchen finished for my party. And let's just say that the final little finishing touches were still happening on the morning of my party. It was touch and go, but we did it. As I said, the kitchen wasn't in bad condition at all. It was in really good condition. So we actually kept the cupboards, like the carcasses of the units, we didn't change those. And we've actually kept the same layout. Um, so yeah, we kept those internal cupboards, meaning that we only changed the end panels um, and the doors. So inside it's all the same, it's just had a facelift and new worktops, which has made the biggest difference. Looking back at the before and afters, I can't believe like what a transformation it has made. So I'm really, really excited to share today's video with you. The only change that we made to the layout was uh, we just changed up a few of the cupboard sizing just to make it a little bit more like user friendly, I think. Um, after living in a kitchen for a while, you know what works and what doesn't work. So we actually only changed a few things just to make it a bit more suitable for us. So I'm going to stop rambling now and I'm going to show you the before, the after, and a little bit of during the process. So here is the kitchen before we have made any changes to it. At this point, the only change that we have made is the flooring. We changed all of the downstairs flooring back in 2019, and this flooring will be staying with the new kitchen. One of the first jobs that needed to be done was probably the messiest job, and that was to cut loads of holes in the ceiling for the new spotlights as we were changing the lights from the track lights to spotlights, but we had to cut all of those additional holes so that the wires could be passed through. Um, once that was all done, we then had the ceiling replastered. These are the samples um, of the wall paint for the kitchen. As you can see, they differ quite a lot. I think I got the first few samples kind of wrong. Um, so the top color is a Dulux shade called Romney Wool. A really nice color. Well, all of these are really nice colors and I'd love to use in the future, but just not quite right for this product, uh, for this project, don't I? Um, this is Ammonite from Faro and Ball. Absolutely love that colour, but it's just a bit too similar to the door. And I am actually looking for an off-white with like an undertone of grey. Um, I thought this would be slightly lighter, but it's really nice colour, just not quite right. This is, um, it's either called Old School House or Old School something from Farrow and Ball. Again, really nice color. It's actually really similar color to what we've got in our lounge and upstairs. The light neutral beige, really nice color. But I think this is the one we're actually gonna go for. It's from Valspa and it's called a Swan Queen. But I think this is just right. It's off-white, it's got the undertones of gray and I think it sits really nicely to the gray cupboards. So today is the day the painting starts in the kitchen. All of the units have been covered up, so no like paint sprays on them or anything. And yeah, so I think this morning everything has been sanded down and filled, and then the painting will commence over the next few days. 
Because the ceiling was plastered, and obviously this all needs painting, um, the lights have been covered <laughs> with poo bags <laughs> so that um, we don't get any paint off them. So currently it looks like I've got lots of dog poops hanging <laughs> from the ceiling. Hello everyone. So as you can see, we are now in the new kitchen. It's actually been finished for a few weeks now. So we've really been enjoying using it over the last few weeks. And today is the day I'm going to share it all with you. Earlier in the video I said that we were keeping the same layout but we were just changing a few of the cupboards um, and this area was one of them. So over here we had um, a wine rack on the end here and then large uh, drawer units. The wide drawer units were amazing but the wine rack was just collecting dust, um, the bottles look mismatched, I felt like it just didn't look neat and tidy at all and I felt like it was just such a waste of space. So what we have done is taken that out um, and put two units here instead which has worked really well. So in here uh, we've got the big um, drawers where I put plates in and then on this side these are drawers where I have put pots and pans and like mixing bowls and things so I'm really really happy with that. So we've centralised the hob, it's sat in the middle of the wide drawer so it's a bit more over here. We have put the extractor fan in and we added another cupboard here. There was nothing there before and now I just feel like that area looks a lot more complete and I don't, yeah, it just has finished it off so nicely. The light is coming in behind me so I hope you can kind of still see here. But on this side the layout has remained the same and over here we, it just felt like really wasted space in this corner unit and now you can just pull it all the way out and I feel like you can make a lot more uh, like you can just get to things at the back. I need to reorganise this, it's not very tidy. Over on this side we have kept the same fridge and freezer. Um, and then we have the two larger cupboards either side and they have stayed. But what we have changed is this top section. Before there was a big gap and then there was two units. But instead we've actually brought the unit down to um, make it look a bit neater basically. I don't know why there was such a big gap before. And we've put this cupboard in which is now um, just full of glassware. And also, as you can see along the top of the cupboards, we did add the coving. Um, I am so glad we did. I think it just really adds a little bit more premiumness, if that's even the right word. Um, it just makes the kitchen look a little bit more premium and a little bit more grown up and I don't know, I really, really love it. We tiled the splash back here and um, before we had a glass panel, which I wasn't so keen on. I really wanted to tile it um, and I'll leave the name of the tiles linked below, but they were um, from Topps Tiles. They weren't expensive at all. And then we used um, like a greyish off-white grout, which I really like. I think it's just a little bit more forgiving than white grout. Um, because if you're cooking and splash spaghetti bolognese on the white grout, um, it might just be a little bit less obvious in not so bright white grout. So the kitchen is from Haldens, as I mentioned before, and it's the Chilcum style in the pebble colour. We spent a really long time back and forth on colours and style. The reason why we did actually end up going with the Chilcum style is because, I'll show you in a sec, but on some of the end panels we have got the tongue and groove end panelling which I absolutely love and then do that in the original style that we chose. So we changed because we wanted that. Um, we've got lots of gold hardware and black hardware in the bathroom. We actually haven't got any silver anywhere in the house. However, in the kitchen, because we kept the microwave, the oven, the fridge, all of that was silver. And I think 
Silver actually is perfect, personally, I think, for a kitchen. It's timeless, it goes really nicely with the grey. So we just went for these little chrome knobs and I think they look really nice. But as I mentioned, the tongue and groove end panels, they are here. Um, and down here, they're on the breakfast bar and running along the back as well. And they're also um, on here. I really, really think that they also just add, I don't know what it is, maybe a little bit more of a country feel to the kitchen. And I'm so pleased that we added those. We did look at getting a butler sink, but I think for the design that we were going for, this has actually worked so much better. So this is a ceramic sink. Um, the worktops, so these weren't from Howden's. Howden's didn't have a great selection of their quartz, um, so we got this from a local company called Alpiana Stone, which I will link below the details of this stone. It's so, so hard to pick a worktop because when you look at samples, they're so small, so it's really hard to imagine it on a big scale. Because the veins run different throughout, it's really, really hard to tell from a sample. So. I did feel like the worktops were a little bit of a risk, but I'm really happy with them. For me, it's just the right amount of vein. Um, there's definitely detail on there, but it's nothing too much. Another thing when we were looking at the worktops, some were quite white and some were slightly off-white, but it was really important to me that we had the contrast between the grey doors and the white tops. If they were a little bit creamy, um, or more of an off-white. I don't think you would get that clean, crisp, sharp contrast um, that we have now, so I'm really pleased with those as well. We've kept our Smeg um, toaster and kettle in here as well. At first, I wasn't sure, but now that they've lived in here, I'm happy with them in here. So although it's fairly gray and white, I really wanted to add some kind of woody tones and earthy textures. So we've got quite a lot of eucalyptus and woody bits. Um, when we went away recently, I collected loads of pebbles and I've put them in this jar here. And then over here, we had this shelf here before. It's from Funky Chunky Furniture. Um, and then I've just added some wooden chopping boards on top just to add a bit more color and texture in here. I love having beautiful fresh flowers um, in the kitchen and these sit really lovely there. We've kept the same rattan bar stools. These were from Dunelm about a year and a half ago. I really like them and the rattan style ties in so nicely with the chopping boards and the woody elements that I've added in. The ceilings are really high in the kitchen um, and we have this empty space here. So we bought a scaffolding board and put it up as a shelf and I'm so thrilled with it. We've also got this really large print here from Decenio and I've just added a few more kind of greeny tones um, to tie in the eucalyptus and the print and just added a few little bits on here as well. I feel like it looks a lot smaller on camera, um, but just to give you kind of an idea of the sizing, that print size is 50 by 70. Um, so from the shelf to the ceiling is nearly a meter high. We also thought about putting a really big clock there, um, but I couldn't find a clock that I absolutely loved, so we went with the shelf instead. I love the White Company hand wash and moisturizer. They smell so nice. And in here at the moment, we've got fresh grapefruit. It's really nice and fresh and so nice for a kitchen. We've had our Nespresso machine for years and years now. I think maybe three or four years we've had this for. I would like to upgrade this soon, but this actually works perfectly fine. And whenever I make iced coffees or coffee with it, you guys always ask which one it is. So I will link it below. It's just the basic one, but it does work really well and makes great coffees. And then as I mentioned, we've kept our Smeg uh, kettle and toaster. When I was buying the hand wash, I also picked up the White Company oven gloves. Um, I was looking online for a long time at oven gloves and I couldn't find any that I liked and I just really liked the white ones with this dark grey strip running through. I think it just suits the kitchen really nicely. Over here we've got our Joseph and Joseph chopping boards which we've had for a while. Our Google speaker which is on usually all the time with the radio on and also here um, wooden salt and pepper grinders. They are from Ikea. Again, just tying in more of those wooden tones just to add a little bit of kind of natural textures, um, which I really love because my style usually isn't gray and white. However, for the kitchen, I think it works really well. 
and I love that we've added in some wooden textures and lots of greenery um, and it's really brought it to life. We've also gone for chrome um, switches and plug sockets. Whenever we have done a room in the house, we have always finished it off with new sockets and switches. I really think it makes such a difference. Um, it's just all of those small details that I think really add up and finish off the room. We were unsure whether to go for an upstand or tile all the way across on both sides, but we have gone for an upstand, which I'm really, really happy about. This is a 75 mil upstand on here. It's the really small things, I think sometimes are really tricky um, decisions, like the paint color. Um, I tried lots of different off-whites. I really wanted a gray toned off-white that would sit really nicely against the cupboards. In the end, we went for Swan Queens. So that is the color on all of the walls. We've got white on the ceiling and woodwork, and then Swan Queen by Valspar on the walls. So just to touch on the worktops as well, we did save about a thousand pounds by not getting the worktops with Howdens. The Howdens, their worktops were quite pricey and they didn't have a huge like, variety of quartz. So in the end we did, as I said, go with a local company. If you Google quartz companies near you, um, I'm pretty sure that a local company would be a lot more cheaper than Howden. So I think that is everything to show you in the kitchen. I will leave all of the details linked down below. Um, if I do miss anything off or you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you or just drop me a DM on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. If you don't already, please come and follow along on my home Instagram account. It's separate to my main Instagram account is where I post a lot more homey stuff so if you are interested in that side of things then please do come and join me over there thank you so much once again and I'll see you next time bye